Good morning. As we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship, we enjoy a call to worship from the late Reverend Lloyd Calavig from his CD, I Sing to Thee, Blessed Assurance. Good morning once again and welcome to this sixth Sunday after Pentecost radio broadcast of Emanuel Lutheran Church in Wadena, Minnesota. Today's radio broadcast is sponsored by Sandy Hendrickson in memory of her late husband, George Hendrickson. May God forever bless the memory of George Hendrickson and thank you, Sandy, so much for your generosity and making this ministry possible today. Speaking of today, we hear Jesus telling what's known as the parable of the four soils today from Matthew chapter 13, and we look forward to Pastor Megan unpacking that parable a little later in our radio hour together. I share some sad news with you. We received word from the Judkins family that this past week on Wednesday, July 8th, Betty Judkins passed away at uh, the Fair Oaks Nursing Home. We extend our sympathies to the Judkins family at this time. We shared a little bit about this last week, but we want to go all in this week, and so we're announcing a new initiative here at Emanuel called Emanuel House Church. And I thought that uh, this morning on our radio broadcast, we would just play the audio part of a video we produced this past week. Um, introducing the concept of house church. It's a video that Pastor Megan, Jill, and myself put together in the last couple of days. Have a listen. Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Wadena, Minnesota is excited to announce a groundbreaking ministry that we believe has huge potential to grow our relationship with Jesus Christ and deepen our relationships with one another. We're calling it Emmanuel House Church. Emmanuel House Church? Is this something new? The concept of house church isn't a new idea. It's as old as the church itself. The early followers of Christ would gather together in one another's homes for prayer, fellowship, and holy communion. During a time when gatherings at our church building will have to be smaller and look a lot different than we're used to, house churches will make it possible for regular, safe, faith-filled gatherings of friends and neighbors where God's word and Holy Communion can be shared many, many times over the next months. So, 
these house churches, what will they look like? Well, we know that Emmanuel House churches will look as different as the people who form them. But Emmanuel House Church envisions Emmanuelites forming groups of two to four households, which will become the spiritual hub of our Christian lives together for the next nine months or so. Typically, these house churches will gather together about once a month for prayer, confession of sins, and the sharing of communion. You might also choose to listen to a recent sermon podcast or do some brainstorming about a service project you could do together. We'll keep you resourced with all kinds of ideas to choose from. I'm liking this idea. Where's it going to take place? Gatherings can take place in a variety of locations. One another's homes, patios and decks, garages, perhaps even a local park. Some house churches will even gather online using Zoom. This is great. I like getting together with my house church. Are there any times I can come to Emmanuel? Emmanuel House Church participants will still show up regularly in the sanctuary or at a parking lot service every month or so. During these larger worship gatherings, we will pray a blessing on your house church and send you home with communion supplies and printed resources for your house church gathering. But what about keeping safe? Didn't you say something in worship about safety teams? We also hope that Emmanuel House Church participants who are able can volunteer once a month or so with one of our five safety teams to make sure that all our gatherings that happen here in our building can be done so as safely as possible. We are the church. I'm excited. When does this start? We believe Emmanuel House Church will open new forms of Christian community as we live out our faith together as God's people. And we'd like to get started forming house churches as soon as possible. If you still have some questions about Emmanuel House Church, talk to Pastor Nate, Jill, or me. Thanks for listening to that, uh, that audio clip of that video. Um, it's best to go to our website, uh, wadinaemmanuel.org, and watch that whole video. And there's also a part two with some uh, really good advice about how to get started forming a house church. And you can get started today. So again, go over to our website and learn more about this brand new ministry. And you know, while you're at our website, wadinaemmanuel.org, check out our safety team announcement. We would love to have your help in order to begin public gatherings of worship again. We are in particular need of captains for these groups, people who we can count on to help every two to three weeks, keep the other volunteers organized and on track. And while you're at our website, stay up to date with our latest information, our emerging plans for being church in 2020, uh, as well as links to our latest devotional offerings and news. Again, visit wadinaemmanuel.org. And in particular, click on the Connect During COVID link to learn more. Okay, let's dive into worship. Our opening hymn is one of our legacy audio files, a hymn we sang together in our sanctuary on January 13th of 2019. The hymn is number 310 in your ELW hymnal, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise, ELW 310.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our service continues with special music from Bill and Sally Adams, from their Gospel Favorites DVD, a song recorded on August 20th, 2017, at Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Wyzetta, Minnesota, How Great Thou Art. Our crosstalk book today is called The Little Gardener. This was the garden. It didn't look like much, but it meant everything to its gardener. It was his home. It was his supper. It was his joy. Only he wasn't much good at gardening. It wasn't that he didn't work hard. He worked hard, very hard very hard. He was just too little. But there was one thing that did blossom in his garden. It was a flower. It was alive and wonderful. It gave the gardener hope and it made him work even harder. He worked all morning. He worked all afternoon. He worked all night. Still, the garden was dying. He would have no home. He would have no supper. He would have no joy. One night, feeling tired and sad, he made a wish. I wish I had a little bit of help. No one heard his little voice, but someone saw his flower. It was alive 
and wonderful. It gave someone hope. It made someone want to work harder. The next day, the gardener was weary and slept the whole day. He slept the whole week. He slept the whole month. And when he finally awoke, it had been just long enough for something to change. This is the garden now full of life and flowers. And this is its gardener. He doesn't look like much, but he means everything to his garden. Jesus tells a story today in the Bible about seeds landing in places that are full of weeds or thorns or rocky. And sometimes it can feel like we're that little gardener working really hard all by ourselves in those difficult places. But when we work together, we can help beautiful things like flowers grow and love and friendship and peace. So today and this week, I'd like you to see what small thing you can do to help make something more beautiful or more loving or more kind or more peaceful. Because everyone is big enough to do something, including you. Our first reading on this sixth Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. I am reading from the NRSV translation. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress, instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm today is Psalm 65, verses 1 through 13. If you have a hymnal at home, please find Psalm 65 in the front of your hymnals, preceding the hymn section, and read the indented sections with me. Psalm 65, verses 1 through 13. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer, to you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will you show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dusk to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. With heavy rain you soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness, and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing, and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks, and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. Our second reading this morning is from Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Again, I'm reading from the NRSV translation. There is, therefore, no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. 
For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh, so that just the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Can you hear me now? That old cell phone provider commercial has made that phrase iconic, and it's gained new life as we gather together on Zoom calls and either forget to unmute ourselves or have other technological issues. And it could also be the summary of Jesus' words in today's story. I'll invite you this morning to pause whatever you're doing and just listen to the story that Jesus tells. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. A farmer planted a seed. As he scattered the seed, some of it fell on the road and birds ate it. Some fell in the gravel. It sprouted quickly, but it didn't put down roots. So when the sun came up, it withered just as quickly. Some fell in the weeds. As it came up, it was strangled by weeds. Some fell on good earth and produced a harvest beyond the farmer's wildest dreams. Are you listening to this? Really listening? So what did you hear in that story? Where did you find yourself in this story? Have you ever felt these kind of responses to God's word? Sprouting quickly and withering quickly? Strangled by weeds, whatever those weeds are? Producing a harvest beyond your wildest dreams? As you listened today to that story, what did you experience? Jesus calls on the crowd gathered to listen and to keep listening. Hearing God's word is not a one-time experience. It's not a booming voice from the clouds once and then never again. It is something that we return to over and over again to learn to grow, and as we learn and grow, our experiences of these stories shift and change over time. I'm reading Glennon Doyle's new book, Untamed, and she talks about having to sink deep into the quiet of her heart until she feels a certain nudge and a feeling like liquid gold seeping into her veins, steadying her, and that's how she knows God is speaking. It's a powerful image, and I wonder, what is that experience for you? As we listen to God, and as we grow, and as we change, those Bible stories that we've come to know and love take on some different meanings. Think about your favorite story from when you were a kid. What did you like about it? When you heard it again, maybe more recently, did something new stand out to you? Did the meaning change? 
Did you discover God speaking to you through that story in a new way? Did a new understanding help you to see the world in a new way? Or maybe, did a new understanding of the world help you experience God's word in a new way? Sometimes we sense that we've experienced God's word, but it doesn't make any sense to us. Or maybe you've realized that while you think you've heard God speaking, you felt that nudge, you've felt that liquid gold flowing through your veins. You question what you know, what you've learned, because it's so different from what you're used to. And if there's any doubt or discrepancy or discord that arises because of what you've heard from God's word, either with others or within your own embedded theology and beliefs, do you question what God can do? Or are there times where you have felt that as much as you try to listen and abide in God's word, there is just too much around you that makes more sense? That there's too much to wonder about and think about. And uh, does this really even matter for my everyday life? If we're honest with ourselves, we can find ourselves in all of these scenarios, in all of these kinds of soil, in our own lives and in the lives of one another. Although I wouldn't recommend diagnosing someone else's soil. (laughs) I would just uh, stick to your own garden plot. It's noteworthy that in this story, Jesus does not use this parable to tell his hearers to be good soil, right? He doesn't say, become good soil. Uh, If you want to go back to the part where Jesus explains this a little more, you can find that in verses 18 through 23, of Matthew 13. But Jesus doesn't say, become good soil, like we can make that happen. If there's any hope for that rocky soil, that weed-choked soil, that unproductive soil, it is that the sower keeps sowing generously and extravagantly, even in the least promising places. Jesus' continued investment in the disciples shows this to us, that Jesus simply will not give up on them and us by extension, in spite of their many failings. And we trust that Jesus will not give up on us either, but will keep working on whatever is hardened, rocky, or thorny within and among us. June 29th was the 50th anniversary of women's ordination in the Lutheran Church. This came about thanks to action by the LCA, one of the predecessor bodies of the ELCA. They took a vote, and it was a simple word change at their uh, assembly that year to change the wording from man to person in their documents about ordination. But of course, the reality isn't quite that simple. It took another handful of months before a woman was ordained, which seems like a blink of an eye compared to the 10 years before a sister of color was ordained. And then it was another 40 years before our LGBTQIA plus siblings were able to be ordained while being in relationships. And there are countless women over the past five decades who have had a clear call to ordain ministry who were blocked by systems of oppression, even though the ordination of women was allowed. I'm thankful for the women who listened carefully to God's call and took that daring risk to be the first. I'm thankful to them for clearing the way so that I don't have to fight to be standing in this pulpit today. I'm thankful that the leaders of the LCA took a risk in saying yes to the call that God was placing on their hearts. 
And I'm thankful for the congregations who have embraced my leadership when so many congregations still turn away incredible preachers and leaders because they happen to be women, much less women of color or an LGBTQIA plus woman. And so it's my turn to listen, to listen to God, to listen for where God is calling me to help till the soil and act so that the kingdom can continue to grow and grow. It's only because of that kind of faithful spiritual listening that was done in 1970 that enables me to be here with you today. And hearing spiritually is related to the concept of deep listening. The idea that we listen with compassion that we listen to understand and we listen with intention, specifically the intention to act. In other words, to open one's ears is to open one's heart. Jesus ends the parable by telling the crowd to listen, not only to understand, but also to act on the teaching, to obey, and in this particular case, to participate in the manifestation of God's kingdom on the earth. So where might we take some time to do some deep listening here and now? To be helpers in the garden of God's kingdom. To root out the weeds that strangle. To pry out those rocks that cause stumbling. Well, we listen to the voices of our black, indigenous, and people of color siblings. We listen to our LGBTQIA siblings. We listen to our siblings who work multiple jobs just to make ends meet. We listen to our siblings who have historically been oppressed, exploited, and left out. We listen to our siblings on the margins of society. We listen with compassion with the hope of understanding and with the intention to act, to help root out those things that create difficulty, harm, and choke the harvest in the kingdom of God. Jesus gives us freedom to take risks for the sake of the gospel, and so we can take hold of that. He endorses extravagant generosity in sowing the word, even in those perilous places. Though we may wonder about the wisdom or efficacy of his methods, Jesus promises that the end result will be a bumper crop. And it is our work to share. So may the Holy Spirit give us soft hearts, a willingness to change our minds when we learn something new, Ears to hear what God is whispering or shouting. And the courage to act when we hear where we are called to share the good news. Amen. Friends in Christ, we rejoice day after day for God's love and faithfulness shown through you and your ongoing generosity to the mission and ministry of Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Your continued gifts allow us to continue this ministry on the radio, online, through phone calls, and in other ways. You can continue to send your gifts to P.O. Box 69 here in Wadena, drop them off at the church, and as always, we encourage you to go to wadenaemmanuel.org, click on the giving link, and explore ways to be generous electronically. Our next hymn is a legacy piece, a hymn that we sang together in our sanctuary on February 10th of 2019, ELW number 712, Lord Whose Love in Humble Service, ELW number 712.
Let us pray. O gracious God, we thank you for all that you have entrusted into our care, the gifts of ourselves, our time, our possession, as well as the gifts of our compassion and integrity. We pray that all we have gathered together could be used in service to the growth of your kingdom, to the sharing of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. We share our faith this morning using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Led by the Holy Spirit, and with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, we pray for the Church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray for your Church, O God, that having been freed from the bonds of sin and made holy in the waters of baptism, we may offer the gospel freely to all people. Bless your church, especially in these times of COVID-19, teaching us new and creative ways to be your church beyond the building and in the world, to sow the seed of your word in new and in transformative ways. Bless our congregation, O Lord, as we enter into this exciting time of Emmanuel House Church together. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the leaders of all nations, O God, that seeds of justice may be planted where there is inequality and seeds of peace where there is disharmony. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for your world, O God, that the earth and its creatures may be tended with care. We pray for adequate rainfall and a bountiful harvest for all. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are caught in suffering, addiction, war, poverty, and illness. We pray especially for Sherry Anderson, Ryan Andrews, Deborah Burnt, Charles Carlson, Mary Lee Coates, Gary Johnson, Betty Judkins, Leroy Christine, Peggy Louine, Dennis Peterson, Connie Rock, Craig Reese, Dorothy Teal, Dennis Teedy, Gary Burnt, Joan Clark, Doreen Johnson, Robert Kiffey, Kia Neuerberg, Jean Tolligson, Betty Wiedrich, Dick Wood, Eugene Wood, and Dolores Yorick. May all who are bound by illness and struggle find true freedom in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who serve, O God. Strengthen those who serve in our military, that they may serve with dignity and be given strength for all that they must do. Bless Max Labar, James Close, Victor Barbado, Joel Bertelson, Sean Evans, Joe Holweger, Samantha Holweger, Karsten Jennings, John Close, Eric Naley, Jacob Radabo, and Justin Wendland. Strengthen with courage and humility other public servants too, O Lord, social workers, counselors, doctors, nurses, first responders, judges, firefighters, and police officers. 
Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks, O God, for the faithful departed, that they, having set their minds on the Spirit and having received their reward, may be models of faithfulness for us. Give strength and peace to all who grieve, especially Avis Paulson and family as they continue to grieve the death of Avis's son Gary, Dennis Peterson, Vera and Jerry Ullman and families in the death of Dennis and Vera's sister Shirley Behing, Charlotte Stempson and family as they grieve the death of Charlotte's sister Minetta Stordahl, Donna and Leroy Christine and family as they grieve the death of Donna's brother Dwayne Devereaux, and Betty Jutkins' family as they grieve her death at this time. Fill their hearts with peace and surround them with a great cloud of witnesses to comfort them in all their sorrows. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your abundant mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another, taking some time now to share that peace of Christ with those in the room with you, as well as reaching out through phone messages, emails, and text messages to share the peace with others. I encourage you to share the peace with at least one person you haven't had the chance to share the peace with during this time of coronavirus and social distancing.
Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is in your ELWs number 314, Arise, Your Light Has Come. ELW number 314. worshiping with us this morning. We encourage you to stay connected with us throughout the week by signing up for Remind notifications, following us on Facebook, or subscribing on YouTube. For more information on how to connect with us, please visit wadinaemmanuel.org. Thank you.